شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين من صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم All praises are definitely due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى being the cherisher the sustainer of all the worlds Peace, blessing, and salutation be upon the noblest of Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was sent to this world as rahmat lil alamin, mercy unto the entire creation. Respected teachers, fellow colleagues, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuhu. A baby is born. After half an hour, he leaves this world. Or he live another 40 years or 80 years. No matter how long he live, his life duration will come to an end, meaning death. It is a fact where no one can reject or deny. Very famous verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, Kullu nafsin ikatul maut, that, each, that each and every soul shall taste death. Respected audience, from the time of Adam salam till now, how many people have left this world? Have we ever think about it? How many funerals have we assisted? How many janazah have we carried on, on our shoulder? And how many people, our close relatives, etc., have we buried with our very same hand? A lot. And it is natural when we lose our close relative, no matter who is he, we feel sad. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Respected audience, very briefly, let us listen what happened when a particular person's soul is removed. There is a lot of verses in the, in the Holy Quran. For example, I've chose Surah Ibrahim, one of, the, one of the verses from Surah Ibrahim, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stated in the Holy Quran, يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بقول ثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويدل الله الظالمين. الله سبحانه وتعالى give firm speech to those who believe in the life of this world and the life of the hereafter. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى give misguidance to the oppressors. If you see in the tafsir of this verse, a believer at all time he remain firm on faith. It's time of joys and sorrows. Do not take him away from the fall of Islam. At the time of death, the recitation of the kalima makes him able to repent, to repent for his sin before he leaves this world. And at the time of the questioning of the grave, his heart is at ease to reply to his question. But for the unbelieving servant, for the unbelievers in the world, they never step fast. No matter what they are in sorrows or happiness, whatever. And in the grave, their hearts are restless and uncertain. And the hereafter, the only thing they'll receive is the punishment. Respected audience, at the time of death, even in our last time, Shaitan does not leave us. He does not give up. He still come to us and try to take us away from the fall of Islam. At the time of Sakarat, it will be so hard, so difficult that one will be very thirsty and shaitan will come to him with a cup of water and if that person was a disobedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he will accept shaitan and shaitan will give him that cup and what was the container of that cup? it was pus and urine and shaitan will laugh, will get happy as he succeeded in his task but if one was an obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he will reject shaitan 
and read the kalima la ilaha illallah and save his iman. A hadith come to mind whereby an Mu'ad bin Jabal qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man kani akhir kalima la ilaha illallah daqal al jannah. That the one whose last word is la ilaha illallah, he'll enter paradise. Respected brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those whose last word will be la ilaha illallah. It is stated by one of the companions of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anil Bira ibn Azib. He says that once we were returning from a funeral prayer, reaching the graveyard while a grave was being dug. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat there. So we all sat around him. The situation was such that as if we could feel the presence of the bird on top of our heads. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his blessed hand, he had a stick which was making marks on the ground. Then he raised up his head and said twice or thrice, استعيذ بالله من عذاب القبر That seek refuge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment of the grave. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, At the time, when a believer's soul is about to leave this world and get nearer to the after, angel with face, angel with face as white as sun, descend upon him from the heaven. With them they the shroud out of the shroud of paradise and perfumes out of the perfumes of paradise until they take seat near him to a distance of an eyesight. The after, the angel of death come to him, sit near his head and the angel tells him, the angel say to that man, O oh, so come out, come out toward the forgiveness and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it then come out flowing like the flowing of a drop of water from a cup. That's how easy his soul gonna come out. Then they place the angel, take his soul and place it in that shroud. From there come fragrance, like the most excellent fragrance that is available on the surface of the earth. Then from there the angel ascend with it. The angel, they ascend with it. And there is not a single angel who do not but ask who is this pure soul. Then the angel will reply, so and so son and so and so. With the best name which he was named onto the earth until it reaches to, ne to the nearest heaven. Then from there they seek an opening for him from heaven to heaven until it reaches the seventh heaven. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write down the scroll of my servant on the highest heaven and send him back onto earth because therefrom I've created him and I shall take him therein and then I shall take them out therefrom. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, then his soul is returned to his body. After that, two angels, Munkir and Nakir, they come to him, make him sit, and they start questioning him. They ask him, Man Rabbukum, who is your Lord? Then he replies, My Rabb is Allah. Then they ask him, What is your religion? He replies, My religion is Islam. Then they ask him, the third question, Who was this man who was sent amongst you? He replied, The Nabi of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then a proclaimer proclaimed from the heaven that indeed my servant has spoken the truth. So he, spread, so he spread out for him a bed of Jannah. Give him a dress from Jannah and open out a door for him from Jannah. Then it fragrant air come to him and his grave is spread out to a distance of an eyesight. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, A man beautiful of faces, good in dress, Fragrant of air comes to him and tell him, Give good news of that which we used to give pleasure. This is the day which you were won. Then the man gonna ask him, Who are you? Who are you? Your face is the face which brings good. Then he reply, Ana amalukan salih. That I am your good action. I am your good deed. Then the soul says, Oh Lord, do not O oh Lord bring the hour, O oh Lord bring the hour. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, As for the infidel, when his time is about to leave this world and get nearer to the hereafter, angels with ugly faces come to him. With them, there is a piece of cloth. Then they take seat near him to a distance of an eyesight. Then after, the angel of death come to him and sit near his head. And the angel of death says, O oh, impure soul, come out, come out to the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
it then come out. The angel snatches it off as iron pit oil snatched from moistened wool. That's how his soul will be taken. So severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this. Then after they take that soul and place it in that shroud. But from, from that cloth, from there, there's a stench like the most smelly stench that is available on the surface of the earth. Then from there, from there, the angel ascend with it. There is not a single angel who do not but ask, who is this impure soul? Then the angel will reply, so and so, son and so and so, with the worst name which he was named on the surface of the earth. From there, they ascend with it and look for an, they seek an opening for him, but there will be no opening. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا تفتحوا له أبواب السماء ولا ينخلوا الجنة حتى يلجوا الجمل في سم الخياط. That there will be the 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 door of heaven will not be open, nor will they enter paradise until a camel enters the hole of a needle. It means the unbelieving servant will never enter paradise, as they never believe in the oneness of Allah and His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, write down his scroll on the lowest hell and the lowest heaven. Then his soul is pulled down. Thereafter, his soul goes back to his body. Then the, the two angels go to him, Munkir and Nakir. They make him sit and they ask him, they questioning him. Man Rabbukum, who is your Lord? Then he reply, I don't know. Then they ask him second question, what is your religion? He will reply, I don't know. The third question they ask him, Who was this man who was sent amongst you? His reply, I don't know. Then a proclaimer from the heaven proclaimed that indeed you have spoken falsehood. So he spread out a bed of Jahannam, a bed of fire, and it opened up a door of Jahannam. Then he, its heated air come to him. Its heated air come to him. Then his, his grave is narrowed. His grave is narrowed until his rib are exchanging him. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, A man ugly of faces, impure of cloth, stench of air, come to him and says, Give good news of that which you used to give. Give good news of that will give you trouble. This is the day which you were warned. That, uh, that man going to ask him, Who are you? Who are you? Your face is the face which brings evil. Then he'll reply, Ana amaluka khabith. That I am your evil action. I am your bad action. Then the soul says, Oh Lord, do not bring the hour. Oh Lord, do not bring, do not make the resurrection occur. Respected audience. It comes in one of the hadith whereby Ana Abi Hurayrata radiallahu ta'ala anhu call. Call a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. المؤمن يموت بعرق جبين that a believer die with sweat on his brow this hadith has been explained in different ways but one of the most acceptable interpretation is that a believer he is one who always struggle hard in the life in the life of this world he always struggle hard up to his death he is always active and energetic to this effect that is stated in the Holy Quran we have created death and life to try who amongst you is best in action. And in some other narration it says, at the time, at the time of the death of the believer, sweat will be seen on his forehead. Last narration. I will end up with this narration in order for us to ponder, to think before it's too late. And it come in that narration. When a particular person's soul is removed, two angels are sent. Two angels are sent from the sky to that person with three commands. They go to that particular person and they say, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, Aqatalta dunya am dunya qatalatka. Have you killed the world? Or the world itself killed you. Then second they ask him, Ajamaat dunya am dunya Have you 
collected from the wall or the wall itself collected you? The third one. They ask him, Afaraqta dunya am dunya afaraqatka? Have you separated from the wall or the wall itself separated you? Dear brother in Islam, at that point in time, have you ever think about it? What will be our answer? What will gonna reply? Have, how have we spent our life? Each and every single action that we've done will be accountable for it. So with these few words, I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us the understanding of the deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those whose last word will be la ilaha illallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us at the time of death and at the time of the questioning of the grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and may he grant us all paradise inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. And there's a few announcements here. Darum Pretoria uh, Ladies Section on the 22nd of May at 7 p.m. in uh, Lodium Community Center for the ladies only. And the second uh, announcement is uh, uh, annual uh, Milad al Nabi Gyarui Sharif will be held on Sunday, 24th of May 2015 at the Lodium Community Center. Ladies program only. And Niaz will be served. And please forward this message to our brothers, uh, to our sisters, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladina an Amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اهدنا guide us give us hidayat سرات المستقيم to state path hidayat to for state path and then in same surah is mentioned clearly which one is sirat e mustaqim allah said sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim sirat e mustaqim straight path is of those who was favored by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in arm of Allah was upon them. Amongst the people, those who are favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are four Imams known to everyone. Imam Abu Hanifa. Name of Imam Abu Hanifa is Noman. His father name was Sabit. Imam Abu Hanifa Noman ibn Thabit Imam Malik ibn Anas Imam Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal I mentioned the name according to the times Imam Abu Hanifa Yesterday, 2nd of Shaban, it was blessed demise day of Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa is amongst the Tabi'een. His time is first, then Imam Malik, then Imam Shafi'i. The year Imam Abu Hanifa left this world it was 150 hijra what 150 hijra this was the year of demise of Hazrat Imam Abu Hanifa 
and this is the year of the birth of Imam Shafi'i Muhammad bin Idris Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi. Amongst these four Imam, is very important. We have to believe all of them. They are an haq, and one of them we should follow. In this present era, is wajib and compulsory for us. We have to follow one of them. So Imam Abu Anifa, amongst the Aima, he is that personality, the one who has opportunity to meet and to see and to achieve the company of Sahaba. Hazrat Anas ibn Malik, he had this opportunity to meet him and Anas is Sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also Imam Abu Anifa has this opportunity to learn and listen hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Anas radiallahu ta'ala no. and other many Sahaba he met them that's why he is called Tabi'i amongst the Aima Imam Abu Hanifa is Tabi'i and he was a great Imam. I would like to tell you very briefly, sometime Shaitan confused the people, especially Mus Muslims. When Quran and Hadith is there, no need for you to follow any of one of Imam. Quran also is there, Hadith also is there. So then what is the need to go and follow any of one of four Imam? Very easy we should understand Quran is there but to understand Quran is not easy like they understood. So to get Masail from the Quran in this present era, we don't believe that anyone, the one who can claim that he knows Quran properly, like Imam Abu Anifa, like Imam Shafi, like Imam Malik, like Imam, and that era also they were problem because non-believers want to create fitna amongst the Muslim and you want to divide them and make them weak and that's why entire ummah become together and unanimously they accepted four imams Th through that entire ummah was united and to follow the imam is proven from the holy quran likewise in every namaz and every rakat surah fatiha we are reading and they are, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ihdina surat al mustaqim for surat al mustaqim we are asking making dua in the court of Allah and then also mention after this by Allah himself in same surah which one what is the surat al mustaqim path of hidayat state path surat al ladhina an'amta alayhim the path of those who are favored in arm war upon them and amongst the people these four personalities are favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in arm of Allah upon them concerning knowledge concerning taqwa concerning piety concerning status concerning sadaqat all the good quality they possessed is that's why Allah favored them and Allah is in arm upon them and from this surah we should learn important lesson to follow them is order of Allah and in every namaz we are reading that these verses Jauma nad'u kulla unasim Help me Ufaz Jauma nad'u kulla unasim Bi imamihim MashaAllah It means everybody is here I knew but I want to take your attention Jaum 
on the day of judgment they will be dawat and call for the people kullu nasir everyone will be called bi imamihim with the imam some of the mufassirin under this verse commentary which is written by them clearly they said there will be announcement oh hanafi oh shafi oh maliki oh hamli come this side go to janna so on the from the, these other many verses from that is proven that to follow imam is very very important and through that without leader the one who doesn't have imam and leader then he will be astray so alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa taala has granted us this tawfeeq that we al sunnat wal jamaat we are the followers of four imams we accept these all imam are haq and right and to follow and practically one of them is compulsory in south africa mostly i can say majority the followers of imam abu anifa and then imam shafi rahmatullah ale maliki and hamli and other countries are there so may allah subhanahu wa taala grant us tawfeeq to keep it in the proper manner and to follow imam that will be, uh, be through the guidance of them inshallah we will achieve success glory in this world and the hereafter as well dua hai allah hame amal ki taufeeq ata farmaye ya nabi salam alayka ya rasul salam alayka ya habib salam alayka salawatullah alayka anta shamsun anta badiru anta nur fawqa nure anta iksiru wa ghali anta misbahu suduri ya nabi salam alayka ya rasul salam alayka ya habib salam alayka salawatullah alayka ya habib ya muhammad ya arus al khafi qaini ya muayyad ya mumajar ya imam al qiblataini ya nabi salam alayka ya rasul salam alayka ya habib salam alayka salawatullah alayka al-fatiha ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا تقبل دعاءنا ببركة قولك الكريم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك